Welcome to the Planet Rock Podcast, the hottest show in the cosmos. Get ready for insight and inspiration right here on Planet Rock with your special guest, MCAD, and Pastor Michael Barrett Jr., and your cosmic guide through our ever-changing space and time, your host, Raquel Herring. Welcome, welcome back to the Planet Rock Podcast, your go-to spot for all things relationships, personal growth, and navigating life's twists and turns. From the depths of dating, marital dynamics, to the heights of spiritual journeys, entrepreneurship, money, pets, and plants, we explore every facet of human connection. I'm Raquel Herring, your cosmic guide on this wild ride called life. Each episode of Planet Rock is packed with insights and inspiration to help you thrive in this ever-changing world. From heartwarming stories to candid conversations, we're here to empower you and uplift your spirits. So tune in every Thursday at noon on Envision-Radio.com for some real talk, real people goodness. And follow me on social media for updates and swing by my website at RaquelHerring.com to stay connected. So settle in and let's rock your world one relationship at a time right here on Planet Rock. Introducing MCAD, the trailblazing American music producer and rapper who revolutionized the hip hop subgenre of bass music with his iconic 1985 single bass rock express okay mcad pioneered a new sound that continues to resonate in the music industry today from his early beginnings in the studio at just 13 years old to becoming the driving force behind hits like bass mechanic and how much can you take MCAD's passion for creating innovative music knows no bounds. His father, recognizing his talent and ear for music, nurtured MCAD's creative spirit, leading to the birth of bass music and a string of chart topping hits. Chart topping hits. Today, MCAD remains a legendary figure in the music world, inspiring artists and fans alike with his timeless tracks. As he continues to evolve his commitment to creating meaningful music and books that uplift uh, and motivate the youth of tomorrow remains unwavering. He has recently authored a new book titled, What is the Soul? And also joining us today, yay, Pastor Michael Barrett Jr., a dedicated minister with over two decades of service, currently leading as the senior pastor of Do Right Christian Church in Los Angeles, California. The word will make you do right. Pastor Barrett's commitment extends beyond the pulpit as he actively engages in outreach, serving on the California Food Bank Board of Directors, and ministering to incarcerated individuals through prison ministry. With a focus on spiritual growth and serving the kingdom, Pastor Barrett embodies God's inclusive love in every aspect of his life. Thank you for joining us, Pastor. Thank you for joining us, AD, MCAD. So join us in welcoming both of our special guests as we bring the one and only MCAD to the stage. Welcome. Hello, hello, hello. How you doing? I'm fantastic. First, let's talk about you being in Brazil right now. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's uh, where you are. What got yes. you to Brazil? Uh... Well, I have a show to do in August, um, and I was in Colombia. Okay. So uh, I left there. I just said, well, I'll come down and, uh, you know, get prepared. And and at the same time, I, I like Brazil, you know. Okay. Yeah, so... 
I like yeah. it too. I haven't been, but I know I like it already. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 a great place, you know. Um, and you know, we God give us the world. So why we stay in one corner? Right. I want to live everywhere. Exactly. I want to live a lot of places. Like my my dream place is to live in Italy. Ah. All right. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I just got to get the courage to do it. And like, am I going to do it by myself? Am I going to try to do it with someone else? Like, how am I going to do this? But mm. I think it takes courage to say, you know what? I'm just going to go to another place and I'm going to make life happen there. You know, you know, that's what, you know, that's what I say to people, uh, you know, because, you know, I hear a lot of, you know, commentary like on the, the net, the web, what have you. And yeah. they talk about, you know, people leaving uh you know and going to other places yes and you know a lot of people you know it's, it could be a lot of negative things that that are said but right. to me you know and like i when i do meet other brothers in these other places and they have the same story because you know we tend to uh point the finger at each other and say these negative things but like i i tell them it's only out of their own insecurities. It's mm -hmm. only because basically, I mean, who doesn't want to travel the world? Who doesn't want to go somewhere else and right. experience these, these great things? Yeah. They want to too, but they don't yeah. have the courage. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? They're, they're yeah. scared because yeah. it takes courage, you know? And, yep. you know, it, 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 to me, it, it's, it's a great reference that I use. I say, you know, it's just like, you know, back in the day, like way back in the day with Harriet Tubman. And she was saying, like, you know, if I could have freed a lot more slaves had they known they were slaves. Yeah. You know, so it, to me, it's this it's the same thing. It's like, oh, you know, when one slave, the other, one slave is leaving and the yeah. other slave is saying, Hey, well, Massa take good care of us. Right. He, he, you know, he gonna feed us tonight. We know where we gonna lay down. You know, right. so we might as well just accept what it is and take what we're getting. Right. And that's you know that's that's for the 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 the, the ones that feel that they can't yeah. challenge or tackle you know these kind of feats, and yeah. it's not for me. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we only have so much time while right. we're here in this life. So, hey, man, I'm finna do it. You know, yes. I'm, not, I'm out here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, my gosh. And what gave you the courage to just say, I'm gonna do it? Well, um, this is something uh, I before I did for years, I've my mind was always into doing it and you know you know experiencing and doing these different things and and then what was one of the main catalysts i'll tell you um because we're dealing with like a new system far right. as our monetary system right and we know that the the old monetary system is you know it's been having a problem for years okay right. uh decades but you know me seeing the future in that knowing mm -hmm. that you know they you know like crypto they say yeah. it's whatever they say it is whatever but we need a new system and there's nothing else right. so you have to do the math and I, I was like, you know, I've, I've been dealing in crypto for years and I started seeing how more and more, the, you, you know, they started shutting down uh, uh, avenues for us to access it, to get yeah. to it. You know, the exchanges were closing down uh, mm -hmm. certain cryptos we couldn't participate in. Right. And right. these other countries, it's still open. And right. also there's a lot of, you know, financial gain to be obtained. That's and right. in back, you know, back where you at is <laughs> they're closing the doors. You yeah. know, they're not just building a wall to keep the people out. Oh, that's it's right. It's like they're building one to keep you in. 
They you know? both walls work both ways. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. So I'm like, I gotta get out of here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's so stifling. It, it's, yeah. it's so many different reasons. You know, I mean, I as a black man, you know, in America, it's like, you know, growing up, you know, you, you especially being down in the bottom, in the South, Mm. The, the, the dirtiest part of the map it, it is it is something because you really you know because we grew up there we don't really realize how bad it is you know yeah. and wow. you know it's like a frog in a pot you know you, you just you get comfortable in that warm water till it kills you mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. the thing is you know leaving when you leave and you go somewhere else and you start you know, experiencing these these different ways and you know cultures and yeah. attitudes. It's like wow, man. It's like you know, it's so cliche, but I can breathe. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I I can breathe. It's like it's incredible because you don't have all these pressures on you that you've grown up with. Mm. You know that you dealt with your whole life. Wow. Do you know how strangling that is. Yeah. How stifling! It's it's just man, man. It's it's like, ah. yeah, it's 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 serious, you know. So I would tell people, you know, just just if you can, but don't let fear, yeah, be an option. You understand? That's and right. that was my my main thing. That was that was the the, the strongest catalyst for me was when I I thought about like. Why, why am I not doing it? And yeah. then the only thing could come to my mind was fear. Yeah. And then I was like, well, the father said, I didn't give you the spirit of fear. Right. So where you get that from? So at that point, it was a challenge for me. Yes. You understand? Because his words, I didn't give you the spirit of fear. So I knew at that point, by all means necessary, I had to make it happen. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That's encouraging because I want to do it. You know, oh my gosh, to live someone else to someone else, somewhere else to like, like you say, immerse yourself in that culture and just experiencing something new on that journey. It just like, I think, oh, what does the sun feel like there when it kisses my skin? What does the wind feel like? And then you hear the different people talking and moving around. All of that just excites me so much. So I'm glad you said all that because you're so right. It's that fear and having the courage to say, I'm going out there. I'm going to explore, you know. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I'm going to get right. That kind of sidetracked me. I had to talk about the travel. You know what I'm saying? So. Please tell us about, you know, share with us the behind the story behind the creation of the iconic single Bass Rock Express and how it influenced the development of bass music. Okay, um, uh, I, my story. Uh, my my dad he had a he had record stores uh -huh. and. I started working in the record store when I was like 11. Okay. And uh, I used to come up from Miami because my dad, he moved from Miami, him and my mom separated. He moved from Miami to Fort Lauderdale, started his own business, what have you. Um, so anyway, I, I get to, um, I come up in the summers. So okay. one, one of the summers we were leaving, closing up the record store, getting ready to i thought go home but we end up at the studio you know um and you know like adults do they don't tell kids what they're doing you just right. alone for the ride right. right so so i end up in the studio this was the studio it was a nice you know lavish studio at the time um and it was the studio actually where betty wright casey and the sunshine band and all what? these different artists you know did their thing Okay. So I'm in the studio. I'm just, you know, tripping out about the studio. Like, wow, this is cool. This is, you know, never been in a studio before. Kids straight out of Liberty City. So it was, wow. you know, impactful. 
Yeah. Uh, but what happened, my dad had a whole project going on because he was selling so much of the new uh, record, like uh, Rapper's Delight, you know, okay. the Sugar Hill Gang. Ah. And yeah, and so he was like, I can uh, make one of these because, you know, in his mind, it, it was nothing. It was just some kids on a on the mic rapping and gooba da gaba da and you know what I'm saying? And he felt like it was so easy to do. So they're in the studio, I get there to the studio, the producer is there and the chick sexy lady who was, she was um, the rapper at that time. And it was another guy, MC Chief, he was, he was the rapper, but he wasn't there. But anyway, so when I get there, she knows me from the record store and I was real quick with the music and I was gifted. Thank the father. And Amen. so she says, she says, Adrian, what would you, what would you, uh, what you think about this track? What you, you know? And I said, it's cool. Cause they had a whole track done. I said, it's cool. But if it was me, I would do it a little different. And okay. so she said, well, what would you do? She, so she started talking to the engineer and she said can you see what he's talking about can you and so the engineer he's like oh that kid don't know what he's talking about you know mm -hmm. and so i i would agree with him because i've never been in a studio i've never even thought about making a record so you know i had no problem with it yeah but she went to my dad and uh, you know doing her womanly thing and so, <laughs> so, so my dad was like, uh, well, uh, Frank, can you, uh, you don't have to erase that track. Can you just put it to the side and basically placate the kid? Okay. So he was trying to make a good impression on my dad. So he was like, not showing that he was kind of, you know, perturbed by the whole thing and right. one of those, but he was like, okay. So he broke out the drum machine. And clean slate, he just started hitting it. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, how you want this to go? Okay, so he was trying to make me look crazy. All right. Uh -huh. mm. But <laughs> but I, you know, I didn't pay it any, I was too young for that. I didn't pay it no right. attention. So I just started beating on the desk. So he programmed the beat. And then we went through all the sounds and I picked the sounds and he programmed and and I even had melodies in my head because I listen to music all day long. You know, I listen okay. to all the greats, you know. So yeah. uh, so we, you know, uh, I, I had mel I gave him melodies, everything. We, we put together this whole track. And unbeknownst to me, I didn't realize that that's what you call producing. Uh -huh. um, because I didn't touch anything. You know, I just, you know, you know, I was the conductor. You, right. you want to say so uh when we put that track together the other original track we never heard again and that new track that i just produced we put it out and it was a smash hit wow yeah and that started the whole company the whole that was the first black independent record label in the united states wow you know? um that you know hip-hop record label and yeah. that started the, the the whole thing and um and then i went back to miami uh everybody in the studio caught amnesia and wow. forgot what happened you understand but when I, I came back uh next summer what have you they was you know my dad he moving along because he was selling all that other record but then he mm -hmm. started trying to produce other records and they were flopping very bad. Okay. So he stepped to me one day and he was like, you know, why don't you make a record? And I'm like, it never crossed my mind. And yeah. he was like, why don't you make a record? Because you the one that really made that first record. Yeah. And then I was like, okay. And then we got to that and he was like, I was like, I didn't know how to do it. Right. And I'm like, how would I do that? He was like, just go in the studio and do the same thing you did before. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. Uh, he set up studio time with another engineer 
and just to prove that it was me that was the yeah. catalyst, you know? Yeah. And I went in the studio with another engineer and I had the idea in my head because I used to love the bass so much. And I was like, well, I want to make a record that has more bass in it, you know, because the records just didn't have enough bass at the mm -hmm. time, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was like, this is what I want. Cause I used to always blow the speakers in the, in the record. Oh, wow. store. <laughs> and so, so I came, you know, and that's when uh, me and my dad actually, put the title together. My part was bass, you know, rock. And he was like express, you know, like a, yeah. on a train or what have you. So went in the studio, did the same thing with this engineer, uh, put it out, smash hit. Um, nice. Yeah. And then, you know, everybody was like in the, you know, the, the people in the, you know, industry, DJs and stuff like that. And he was like, this this is a fluke. Who is this guy? Nobody yeah. nobody knew me, and it was like, this is a fluke. Um, yada yada yada. Yeah. And then I went back and made another record called Bass Mechanic. Okay. And it just boom kicked the doors in, and yeah. then everybody. That's when everybody said, "Oh, it's something to this bass thing, the the bass and the music, and everybody and their mama." Start putting bass in music. Yeah. And even now, till this day, this is why the South hip hop has outbeat Northern hip hop. Mm. You understand where it derived up in New yeah. York, but it's outbeat, it's, 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 it's beating them. The reason it has beat them is because of the bass. Because of that bass. Because, because of the bass. The, the, yes. the, that South, that sound, and yeah. that's what you know, one over. You understand? Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, I get it. I remember that bass. <laughs> uh, yes, the bass is it. Like, that will make the song, okay? Yes. And you got to feel it. It's like, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's vibrating all in the chest. And, like, the speakers are like, ah, in the car, you know? Exactly. And hip-hop has changed has flipped, like I said, you know, because it was New York who was leading it, but they right. had the Jeep beat. But okay. but when you know we came with that that sound, that 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 bass, it's now all the music, it's gotta have that in it, or it ain't yeah. happening. Yeah. So you were just creating, you like just like history making yeah. in the music the business. Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. it's it's incredible. I never thought of it, you know, yeah. why it was happening. I just was doing what I liked. Right, right. Yeah. And your dad was like right there with you, like helping yes. to develop that, get it out, just do yes. it. Yes, yes, awesome. exactly. Yeah, it was kind of crazy at the time because I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? Like, you know, just, but I did, you know, and it worked. Yeah. Now you've been credited with creating a new music sound in the music industry. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the impact of your music on future generations of artists and listeners? Well, I I feel great. You know, it's an honor to, you know, have done something because how many people, you know, just create genres of music, you know? Right, right. Um, so... You know, that's a, that's a big deal, you that's know. Awesome. And, it is a big deal. <laughs> and I and I'm thankful. It's like, man, it's just, you know, it's humbling. Yeah, it's like everybody could come back and say, you know, that was MC MCAD created that genre. That is a huge deal. Not many people can deal. say that for sure. Real talk. Yeah. So your your track bass mechanic is considered a seminal example of bass music. So yes. um, can you walk us through the creative process behind that hit? Like what message were you hoping to convey through the music? Well, it was for me, you got to remember, I was very young when I was making yeah. these records. Now, how, um, how old were you? Say that again. Um, at By the time I got to Bass Mechanic, I think I was going on, I probably was 16 at the time. By the okay. time I got there, yeah, Bass Mechanic. So with that amazing ear. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was blessed with, my yeah. ear, you know. Um, and for me, it was just, 
it wasn't a big thought process. Mm -hmm. It was just, I was just like, I just wanted to give more of that, that, that heavy bass that, that with music yeah. that people could, you know, vibe to and, and love and yeah. have a good time. That was just, that was just it for me. It was just very simple, but you got to realize too, the reason why it was so easy for me because yeah. I had the grates in my ear all mm -hmm. day. You understand? Mm -hmm. I'm I'm listening to you know all these different artists. You yeah. know all the all the hot hot records. Anything hot because yeah. I'm selling it all day. You know, yeah. so it's like it gets it's it's like going to college. You know, yeah. and, it's, and yeah, so it was easy for me. Well, that was like the great thing because you were like right there. You knew what was selling. You knew what that what even what their sound was like. And then you came out like creating your own sound. Right. Right. Know, just just yeah. from that. And, and like you say, being in college because you're around it. Like that's the good thing. Like you know what people are coming and they're buying and what they're excited about. Yes. You know, so yes. that helps a lot. Oh, that's yeah. exciting. Ah! Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like Michael Jackson and all of them. Man, I'm, yeah. I'm jamming to this stuff all day, you know? Yeah. And I play it as much as I want. I got every hit record there is. Woo! Come on, man, what, what else right. you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and, and then you had the ear though, so that makes the difference, you know? Yeah, because even you know. my mom, she had uh, like, grocery stores in Miami oh and uh there was like convenient grocery stores you know um but we had jukeboxes in there oh, so okay. you know even younger when I was in working in her store yeah um I could you know all we had to do is paint the the quarters like take a marker and put a you know some color on it or whatever oh and then God. the guy would give us back our quarters when he came to collect the money so, okay. you know, I would just listen to all the hot stuff then. I remember back then it was like James Brown and Ooh. Michael Jackson, all that, all, all in the jukebox, but all day long. So my growth was, you know, around and listening to all the, the, the greats. Yeah. With a career span in several decades, what do you consider to be the highlights or defining moments of your musical journey? Hmm. Wow. Uh, hmm. I mean, you made some history, so, I mean. Right. Um, that well, that, you know, because I didn't realize that the impact that I had on music till yeah. like 2014 or something like that. Yeah. Way later in the game. I, okay. you know, I did not realize, you know, uh, mm -hmm. what I had did back in the 80s, you know, yeah. back all the way then. I didn't realize. I didn't even, I never acknowledged it because I guess it came so natural to mm -hmm. me that mm -hmm. I just did it. So I didn't think mm -hmm. of it as a big deal, you yeah. know. Until years later, like I said, 2014, 2015, when people were making such a big stink about it and talking yeah. about it and the history buffs and everything. And I was like, oh, oh, OK. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. And then I even thought about it because I was like, I didn't even think about that I had produced the first record. I, it's so much stuff didn't even play in my mind, you yeah. know, until way later. So, yeah. What made it come back? So 2014, people started talking about it and yes. talking about the history. What what created that that conversation? I, I don't know. Social media okay. set the platform. Uh, and so now you had, you know, these different Facebook and stuff like that. And okay. you had people talking and people gravitating towards it. It was really social media that I paid attention to and okay. saw the the conversations you know okay nice and did you when you did you get in those conversations and people were like what not instantly no okay. i, I kind of you know looked from afar and i was checking it out 
but you I had people, it. right. I was trying to process it, you know, and yeah. you know, then I had people actually bring me in because they started reaching out to me and wanted to ask questions. They wanted yeah. to know this, that, and that's how I really got involved. Wow. I love it. How, you know, it could be that long period where it's not really, you know, nothing happening from where you created history. And then God somehow just brings it back around for you. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, this is true. So since being in the industry, like how do you believe music has evolved? Has it evolved? I mean, since you first started and what advice would you give aspiring artists navigating today's <laughs> music landscape? Well, um, it has evolved. Okay. Um, it's, you, you know, I, I would say either, you know, the generations before are too sensitive or the generations, you know, coming now are desensitized, uh, okay. somewhere there's a happy medium. Uh -huh. Um, but the music, uh, you know, as long as they keep putting some bass in some of these things, you know, I'm vibing with it, you know, <laughs> but, right. um, you know, I do hear certain artists, you know, that I can, I can feel, you know, yeah. um, uh, some of the artists, you know, a lot of artists, I guess that, um, or people who want to be artists, should I say, uh, they, they just feel like they can just get on the mic and they can do anything with no skills. Um, and they just, you know, they don't care, you know, I mean, they're talking about stuff, but they don't have the actual skills to, mm -hmm. you know, bring it across and, and, and kind of now, you know, some of the stuff, like they don't even have to be on beat. You know, they, you know, yes, they were. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> right. yeah, it's like they don't even have that, you know, in them to, to, to know. And, but, you know, everybody's just, woo, 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 just going along with it. So, um, it's, it's, it's different to those, you know, degrees. Um, mm -hmm. but I would say, um, I, I I understand that mm -hmm. things, you know, that far as for the artists that are really doing some good work out there and people are still, you know, saying, ah, oh, that's, that's, that's garbage. Our mm -hmm. music was better and stuff. It's like this. You got to understand when we were younger, the, our parents and generations or what have you before said the same thing, you know, right, that's true. and that's true they had great artists, you know, I mean, you know, like we, all those, those artists that we remember of, of our parents and stuff like that. Great artists. I listen yeah. to those artists now, you know, it was great right, music. Right. Uh, but it's only a kinship to what you can identify with and what okay. your environment is. So yeah. these kids are coming up now and hearing these different things. And to them, this is going to be their, you know, great music. And, and you know, true. so we, we have to, you know, understand that and yeah. keep a balance, you know? Yeah. Yes, there's some, there's, some, there's some trash out there. I agree. But, but you know, there's some good stuff out yeah. there as well. Yeah. It is. Are you still doing music? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just shot a video here about, about eight months or uh, eight, nine months ago. I shot here okay. in uh, Brazil. Yeah. yeah, the song is called Let's Get It. Okay. Um, yeah, but um, like I said, I'm, I'm here now and, you know, I'm uh, getting ready to start doing some shows and different things. And these nice. are like arenas, you know, uh, 10,000, you know, uh, capacity. Yeah. Uh, so they're going to be some big shows, you know, that's huge. That's huge. Yeah. yeah. So it's going to be crazy. Legacy, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm listening. What legacy do you hope to leave behind through your music and how do you envision your impact in the music industry continuing in the years to come? 
What legacy? Um, well, for one, what I, you know, really loved, and that was the warmth of okay. the, the, the bass in a track. And not just so much about, you know, uh, bass mm -hmm. by itself, but music with yeah. that warm bass sound and, you know, they gave it a full body. Yeah. You know, it, it was not just about bass to me. And like they, they called it and named it, coined it, Miami bass and all of that. Uh, that was never my intention. That mm -hmm. was never something because to me it was music. It was about yeah. music. I just liked it that, you know, full analog bass sound in it. They gave it body, you know, yeah. and warmth. And that's what it was for me. But at the end of the day, it was just good music. Good music, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's my bass sound. <laughs> As it trembles in the chest. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, what other projects do you have coming up? And please, please include the title and the, about the book and what it's called and what it's about. Because I know um, you have more projects coming, and we want to get to this book. So Right. Well... To uh, to speak on the book, um, nice. it's called "What Is the Soul." Nice. And what is the soul is to me is it's just something where is uh, we, you know, we know what the you know the flesh is, right? You know, we we even know uh, or have an idea of what the spirit is, yes. and the spirit is of the father that was blown into our nostrils you know that breath of life yeah um but when i ask you what is the soul you know people you know they get you know they start well it's the spirit of a man no yeah. that's that, that that spirit is of the father well it's 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 the man it's the flesh no it's no because from what we for people who believe Yes. in the word and you know to that aspect it's like you have to from the, the, the what the scriptures say we have to make a choice yeah. right we yeah. have to make a choice whether we're going to do the, the righteous thing or the wicked thing so right. for right. us to do that that means you can't just have two right yeah. to make a choice you can't there's no choice with just two okay you choose no no you need three to make a choice so if we have to make a choice then we know we got the spirit we got the flesh and we got the soul and the soul is the one to make the choice between the two mm -hmm. and so it, it just came to me one day i was at at the house and i'm sitting down and you know, it's it's more explained in the book, but I was I I, I just I kind of uh, got an epiphany yeah. on on something, and it was like whoa! And it it came to me that the soul. It was like, well, what is the soul? Yeah. And that because there's no description. Because right. if I ask you, I say, what what is the soul? I, yeah. I want a description because you can give me a description of the flesh and you can give me one of the spirit and you can't even see that. But right. What is the soul? I'm asking yeah. you. You want me to answer it? Yes. The mind, the mind, the will, the intellect. Uh-huh. The mind, the will. Those are characteristics, basically. Okay. But I want, you know, descriptive. Okay. Well, that's why we got Pastor on. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna translate it to us <laughs> what is the soul you know because that makes a difference like you said yes. we, we can describe the flesh we can describe the spirit the soul yeah. and that's who you are that's right you understand? That's it. AD is on it you, you, on, you on a roll with it man I was hoping Rocky went there and said that Raquel but uh, he, he's absolutely right. It's really you, who you are. It's your DNA. Um, okay. Because if if you go into scriptures, and AD, uh, congrats on, on all your accomplishments, man. I, you were talking about Brazil and 
over there in Columbia. Um, and I, I, I was following about the currency and everything with bricks and all of that. So, you know, I did a study on that and everything. So it's really something, you know, over here where we are. Well, that's another show, but yeah, amen. Uh, <laughs> this, this dollar looking a little shaky over here, man. We may, we may need some of that bricks currency over here, brother. <laughs> real talk, <laughs> real talk. Rock, rock, saw a little seed over there, you know. <laughs> right, just in case seed, you know. I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I've been following that, but. You you know you you right on it, man. Um, it, when when the scripture says that, um, when, when we have a funeral, I, I do a lot of funerals, and people when they see the physical in the casket, they mourn over that physical, not really mm -hmm. understanding that that physical is just that flesh, you know, yeah. and yeah. that flesh goes back to the dust. The spirit goes back to the father, but That's the right. soul is who you are because That's the right. soul even stands in judgment uh one day you know so that's, that's who right. you are he's not gonna judge your flesh and that's why i tell people your flesh does not care because it's, it's partial it don't care if you go to heaven or hell that's your right. flesh is not your buddy your flesh want what no. it wants it does not care at the end of the day it understands when i die i'm dead i'm going back to the dirt right. that's it for me that's right yeah. that's right spirit goes back to the father and and it's 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 a, a scripture in in um it says in Matthew 10 and 28, it says this, it says, uh, and fear not them who kill the body, the, mm -hmm. the flesh, uh, but are not able to kill the soul, but mm. rather the father fear him, which is able to destroy both soul and body. And so that, that soul is who we are. Um, it, it's, it's, that's why when you when you come a new creature in Christ, your soul has to be retrained because your soul has so much stuff that it took on by way of this flesh. And mm -hmm. then that born again experience gives you that newness. But your soul has to be reprogrammed because it's been so much stuff has gone inside of you that you got to now get all of that junk out of your soul. That's right. You know? So, yeah. yeah. Right. And, so, and, uh -huh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I needed my train of thought here, what I was going to say. Sorry. Um, mm, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Because I, I forgot my train of thought. There. Sorry about that. I go don't want to break your train of thought. But go ahead. So when I say like your mind, your will, your intellect, right, that's not really saying you. Mm hmm. That's right. like you say, that's just those descriptions. Mm -hmm. Or So would it be the descriptions of you? Or they're just descriptive. That's a descriptive of the soul. Those are, right. you know, okay. yeah. So here's the thing. Okay. okay. Um, because to me, everything is about math because the creator, mm -hmm. he created math. Okay. So everything must add up. It must make sense. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? There's no yeah. hooky booky or none of that, you know? Everything yeah. must add up. And so when we look at it and we say, okay, well, what is, like I said, what is the soul? The reason why it's so important mm -hmm. to know what the soul is, because, yeah. you know, we're, as humans, we are, if we can, you know, if we can uh, see it, you know, we can achieve it. You understand? Yeah. So mm -hmm. we need to be able to, 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 to see this, picture this in our mind. Now, okay. if we're not understanding what the soul is and we're confused on what it is, then it's going to be hard for us to navigate and use it properly. Okay. Because we don't even understand, you know, who we are. You right. know what I'm saying? You, you got to know, know yourself, you know? Yeah. So... Uh, this is why it's so important. And it's so, it's much more important for the youth that if we can mm -hmm. teach them this, yeah. you know, right. uh, okay. it's important for all of us, but yeah. even more important for them because less, you know, mistakes and different things that they can encounter if they realize, you know, really how to, you know, maneuver and, and, and work and manage their soul. Yeah. Um, so, 
that's why it needs a description. It mm -hmm. needs to really be brought into light and yeah. to, to say what it is, it's the blood. Mm -hmm. so, this is what, you know, I got from the father. You understand yeah. that yeah. the soul is the blood. Now, mm -hmm. you know, when we go back and now we can go bounce around with this. Now we go back and we say, you know, cause I spoke to preacher. I, I spoke to, um, you know, uh, uh, preacher I was under and uh, another preacher and it was like oh no that's foolishness nah, that, that's not what it is this and that and they had different you know scenarios and it's like okay well I'm not a preacher so what do I know I'm just you know boo boo, -boo you know yes. um, but when we go back right and, and when the book says I blew uh, he when the father says he blew into the nostrils of man and he became a living soul. It didn't mm -hmm. say he blew a soul into him. Yeah. He said mm -hmm. when he blew in, he became a living soul. Mm -hmm. So that flesh was there with, you know, and it was no life, but the soul was there also already. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. And now it came alive. So he yeah. didn't blow a soul into you. So we understand the soul was already there you nice. understand when he blew life into the soul. Now we can go further and we say um, when when uh, Christ, you know, when he talked, when Yeshua talked and he said, you know, I'm going to uh, renew you. How, yeah. how did he always talk about renewing and, 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 and you know, making people? It was a transfusion of his blood mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. always talked about the blood he covered us in the blood yeah so these are not coincidences yeah. you understand what i'm saying right and even when uh you could probably help me here pastor but when back we go back right and when cain uh uh killed his his brother mm -hmm. and then it was like he said, um, I hear his blood said, crying out from the ground. Yes. He, 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 how? And see, when I brought that up to the captain, <laughs> I said, how did he hear his, he said, I hear his blood. Oh, that was just figure of speech. This is the creator we're talking about. <laughs> right. He think, just figure of speech. Yeah. You understand? You yeah. want to limit him to your capabilities? Mm -hmm. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? You don't think. He he could be speaking exact. Yeah, you understand. And he said he heard. You understand. His blood. Him, cry, his, his, him cry out to him. Right. You his understand. Blood. It's mm -hmm. so many different references. Mm -hmm. Once you start going through it and looking at it with another pair of eyes, mm -hmm. then you will start to see. It also says, check this out. One thing I learned too, whenever you have. Uh, spirituality and science uh -huh. come together okay whenever you have them two come together you got a truth mm -hmm. because uh the science is nothing but math okay mm -hmm. and the father mm -hmm. created that yeah. and the spirituality is him as well okay mm -hmm. so but when those link up but see man has made it where Science is supposed to, you know, uh, 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 the word I'm looking for, but disregard the creator. Like, uh, no, we, we came from a turnip and we <clears throat> yada, yada, yada. You understand what I'm saying? Right, right. That's how man, and he, he, he changed, that's why he called it science. He didn't even want to call it math, you know? Mm. But it's the same thing, you dig? So um, when, when we are... Uh, Oh, shuck, shuck, shuck. Let me get my thought of you again. Um, so, dang it. What else can I say? Um, help me out here, Raquel. Let, what let, let, let me, let me, I'll share yeah. a scripture. Um, okay. It just says uh, Leviticus, <laughs> Leviticus 17 and 11. It actually says, uh, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. 
Mm -hmm. you know? So when we did sacrifices, right? When they used to do sacrifices, it, they were they were told to it. Okay, it said uh, the book says when uh, when uh, a soul sinneth, a soul must die, right? Mm. But Bye. thankfully, reading between the lines, thankfully the father didn't say that a man had to die. He said a soul had to die. Mm -hmm. You understand? On the scapegoat, so, right? So then what that showed me was because we killed animals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then that showed me that here's another correlation to show you that the blood, because it was the blood of an animal, but it was still a soul. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. the soul of that animal. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so they, 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 so we killed the animal. We took the blood from the animal and then we sprinkle it on the veil. And then it was commanded that after you sprinkle so much on the veil, you take the rest of it, take it outside, dig a hole, pour it in the hole, and pour ashes on it to kill mm. it, to mm -hmm. smother it to death. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Because right. of the life and the blood. And this is why even when they talk about, you know, like eating meat and yeah. eating that blood, you understand how it affects people, you mm -hmm. know? from the animals and even when the creator talks about us not eating or drinking blood mm -hmm. you understand what i'm saying and how you know the kosher uh community how they would take meat and drain it and mm -hmm. salt it and drain it and salt it and drain it because they would get all the blood out of it uh -huh. you know so yeah. and when we talk about you know that when the book says you know, guard your eye gate and your ear gate because what happens is, like I told you, this is spirituality and science, science or math come together. Mm -hmm. Whereas whatever you see is being recorded in your DNA. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Whatever you hear is being mm -hmm. recorded in your DNA. No this is why science comes today and they talk about, and then they learn that we we could trace everything about this person in their DNA. We mm -hmm. can find out anything about them in their DNA. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So this is how the spirituality part and the science they come together, okay. you know, to, to make this truth, you know? And so uh, we just have to, like I said, we just have to look at it. Just look at, just step back, zoom out for a minute. Yes. You know, and look at the whole picture and yes. it will start to make a lot of sense. And also when you got Yeshua, right? And yes. it says that he uh, was born, you know, without a father. Well, that will make sense because he couldn't partake in our sins, right? Mm. Because mm. just like when it says, that we were all, I say we were born out of sin or what have you or something like I, that. That always, you know, mess with my head. But uh -huh. then I understood because once Adam sinned mm -hmm. and then he passed along that bloodline, right. you know, because sperm is nothing but there's a clot and with blood and yada, yada, yada. And it's mm -hmm. passed on. So we all have a part of that. Right, born so into sin and shaped in iniquity. Right, so so here, you know, Yeshua, he couldn't have an earthly father because he couldn't partake in our sins. That tainted and blood. That, and, and that blood, exactly, because the blood would have came with that sperm from the man. Yeah. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's so many references to yeah, concur right. what I'm saying. Yes. Man. So the message in your book. Yeah, the message but, in the book is mm -hmm. basically for us to understand this, right? And understand the soul. To, right, understand the soul. And mm -hmm. then you can when in your mind, right? When yes. you when you thinking that, oh, you know, people say, oh, something made me do it, or or I just I just couldn't help myself, this and that. See, when mm -hmm. you understand that you're the soul, right? Mm -hmm. And you yep. got these other two parties here that you have a choice. Yeah, you're making a decision. Exactly. The decision maker. You're the shot. Yes. Yeah. 
Exactly. Yeah. You know, so when you understand that clearly, and it's not just happening to you because you can't help it, mm -hmm. you're making these choices and it puts that accountability on mm -hmm. you. Yeah. And you, it, it, you know, and it's, it's not, it's not weak information that we're, we're, yeah. we're going along with here. This is very stand your ground type stuff, Yeah, you know, because you realize you're accountable. Yeah. What, what what goes on with you and to what degree, you know? So, uh, so, so when we, I have a choice that mm -hmm. say it comes from the flesh or it's coming from the spirit, I can determine, you know, what is my will going to be? Which right. one am I going to choose? Right. Right. You, you, you make the decision. And one thing about God, he won't violate it. He won't, he, he, he won't make you. That's why he told Adam, right. You make you choose. You can have every tree in this garden, but don't touch or eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For the day you do so, you shall surely die. Yeah. But he had that choice to make. Yeah. Um, just like when the, in the book of Joshua, Joshua says, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. He says, choose right. ye this day whom you will serve. But as for yeah. me and my house, because you have that choice, you have that decision. Judas yeah. made the decision to betray Christ, you know? Yeah. So like you said, a lot of times we blame situations and we blame people, but yeah. the truth is God is, he has a desire for your soul. Satan has a desire for your soul, but it's up to you to say to yourself every day you get up, every day I get up AD, when we wake up, Who's going to lord over me today? You make mm -hmm. that decision. God can't make it for you. The devil can't make it for you. You actually have to make that decision, and it becomes a conscious decision. Most people are going to realize they made the conscious decision to reject God, and that's why they have mm -hmm. to deal with the consequences. That's going to be the worst part of the, the, the you, know, you know, when you get in trouble yeah. and you realize you did it to yourself, it's nothing like regretting it because you did it to yourself yeah and and that's what people have to understand your soul makes that decision to accept god or to reject god and yeah. then that's why that's why we say like not my will god but but that but will be done will. right mm -hmm. right right and see right. when we see this is what's important because we have to be able to this is why it's so important to know what the soul is because now when we, we get this in our mind and we teach this to our kids and when we all know this, we can make better decisions because trust me, when you do not, if you're not able to visualize this, yeah, it's harder for you because right. you don't understand really your stake and how, right. how, what role you really play in this. Right, you know, right. but once you, un it's like a kid, right? Let's say a kid, he's 12 years old. He He's going to school. He's into science or something. And he's not into girls right now. But right. the rest of the boys, you know, they're like, oh, you're gay. And this and that or what have you. Yeah. And this kid is sitting home in his room by himself. Yeah. And he's sitting there and he's like, I must be in because, you know, they say I am this and that. Mm -hmm. But if we equip these kids, mm -hmm. you understand what I'm saying? With the mm -hmm. tools that they need and tell them who they are. Who they are. And yeah. tell them, you understand? And break this down. Yeah. This three dimensional thing that's going on within us. We have three minds in this mm -hmm. one entity. Mm -hmm. and that's real. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? And, you know, people are like, whoa, what are you saying? No, you do. Because the spirit and the, and the flesh, mm -hmm. if they trying to get you to do something, they're <laughs> thinking. Yeah. You understand you what I'm saying? You're going to be influenced by one of them. Exactly. And for them to do that, they have, must have a mind. Yeah. They must be thinking. Yeah. You dig? So, There's an intelligence there. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So we got three of them going on within us and we have to, so we don't get confused. We have mm -hmm. to understand mm -hmm. this, this picture, this dynamic. And yeah. then when we can understand it, and like I said, especially with teaching kids, this yeah. is why it's important to teach them the word mm -hmm. because 
when they know the word, right? And then yeah. now they know themselves, then yeah. they can say, okay, uh, is something saying that, you know, I should be doing this, right? I'm yeah. not clear on where it's coming from. So let me uh, use the word as a rule of thumb. This yeah. is what we must teach our kids. So when they look at it and say, okay, the word says that's a no-go. You understand what I'm saying? Right. And, right. and once, you know, they can come to that and then say, okay, so this is evidently against me because I'm the soul. You know, mm -hmm. I don't care. These thoughts coming to me, every thought that comes to me is not mine. Right, mm -hmm. right. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Right. But we have to understand that. This is yeah. why this must be broken down. Because if it's not, when I look in the mirror, I'm going to think it's me, myself, and I. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm messed up at that point. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. We gotta. We have to wrap it up. It's already an hour in. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's really good. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think even as uh, the kids, adults too. Yes. Yes. You know, we yes. gotta know, like you say, we the shot caller between these two. That's mm -hmm. right. And we're gonna get yeah. influenced on either side of this. That's right. And with the word of God, then we know what decision to make. Who's actually doing the influencing? You know, That's right. where it's coming from. That's like right. Like the Lord say, who told you that? That's <laughs> right. right. That's right. right. Real talk. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you both so much for joining us on the Planet Rock podcast. Thank you, Pastor Barrett. You welcome. You welcome. Oh, there's mm -hmm. your book. Yes. Yeah, that's it. Yes. What is the soul by MCAD? Where can they get it? Amazon. You can go on Amazon and you'll be able to get it. Awesome. All right. Awesome. The Pastor Barrett, thank you so much, both of you, for dropping some gems on us, helping us with that spiritual journey to get ourselves together in Christ. We got to. All right. That's we right. How much time we got left? That's right. Got to right. do it. That's right. That's right. Right. Yes. That's right. Thank you so much. Thank you thank for you. having us. I'm sorry. All our listeners, thank you for joining us once again to get all this insight and inspiration. Just, I mean, dropping drums, dropping nuggets. We getting it all right here on Planet Rock. Listen to us every Thursday at noon on Envision-Radio.com. Look forward to listening, listening to us again next week. Have a great day. <laughs>